Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and since the Caterpillar's up for sale again, I figured we'd go ahead and do a Should You Buy video on it, since I haven't done this one before, and I've actually had quite a few requests to do this in the past. Right now, the Caterpillar's on sale in two different ways, with the first being a standalone Caterpillar with six-month insurance for $245, or the other option would be including two Dragonflies and Lifetime Insurance for an even $300, with both packages being available until the 27th. Now the Caterpillar is hands down one of the most interesting ships and the most anticipated ships out there and it's got some differing descriptions of what we should really expect from it. Initially it was referred to as the Freelancer's Evil Twin, but in reality it really turned into more of the Constellation's Evil Twin. Being designed by Drake, it's got an inherent piratey vibe to it and that's for good reason considering what it's capable of. You know, it brings four size 4 weapons with it on gimbals along with an unmanned turret and a pylon mount that we don't really know details on yet. So the ship basically has some good sized weaponry to lay down uh, a beating on whatever's in its targets. Now it should be relatively durable too when you consider it's got a size 5 shield which is actually larger than that that's on the Gemini. And we know the Gemini is a total tank based on it being flight ready right now. Plus the fact that the Caterpillar's got a size 5 power plant which is going to keep everything running effectively. So I would expect the speed to be decent, but not overly impressive when you consider that it's got two size 5 engines, but the maneuverability is likely going to be very poor considering it's only got eight maneuvering thrusters at size 2. And outside of the fact that they are size 2, the shape of the ship means that maneuvering is going to be a bit restrictive. What I mean by that is it's a long skinny ship with pods extending out the front. It's likely going to be challenging to get a lot of roll out of any maneuvering thrusters that may be up there. At least that would be my guess. Now, in a pirate type of role, the Caterpillar is probably best suited to really be more of a support ship, either allowing light fighters like the Buccaneers to do their work to kind of keep that target in place while the cat keeps the big guns on the target dealing the real damage. Um, it could also take advantage of that Drake synergy that we're recently learning about and release a bunch of dragonflies to really keep that target pestered using distortion cannons while it uses the bigger weaponry to leave the real more permanent damage to cripple that ship. But in that support role, it's capable of carrying the cargo, potentially doing some repairs on smaller vehicles, and probably act as a command and control hub ship for that fleet. Now, it's not a ship that should be really considered to be a solo pirate ship unless you come very, very prepared. But if we look outside of piracy, that's where the real versatility of the ship becomes to, or starts to become real apparent. Um, the ship was made with modularity in mind, you know, through interchangeable pods that should show a lot of different options later in development. Now we could potentially see things like drop modules, fuel pods, radar pods, gunship attachments, etc. And when those start to go in, we'll have a better idea of what that ship can do. But even in the current state, and with just cargo, the pods are supposed to be able to have doors that make it easy to open the front and the sides for adding whatever you come across in the verse. Salvage is something that comes to mind, especially since we've seen the tractor beam on other Drake ships. But even then, using something like a dragonfly to haul things in could do the job. Carrying legit cargo is absolutely an option, and could make for a good resupply ship with easy access to everything it ends up hauling. Search and rescue missions with support ships and potential medical bays, the cat could end up taking care of those in need. There's really just kind of endless possibilities depending on what options we end up seeing implemented into the game, but with modularity being the focus, really just about anything should be good. Overall, the Caterpillar is what I would call a master of none, and while that may sound like a very bad thing, it's not, because it is good at almost everything. Um, the whole series are better haulers. The Red, uh, Cutlass Red is a better search and rescue vehicle. The Redeemer um, is a better gunboat. The, um, the Reclaimer is a better salvage vehicle. The Merchantman is a better shop. But you know what? It should be able to do all of those things. And if you want the versatility to do whatever, it's hard to argue with the Caterpillar. Now the price point on the ship is fairly high, but what you get in return is a lot. And my concerns with the ship are really more about what the final design de decisions are going to be and how they get implemented. Things like what are the jobs for the crew, how many module options are we really going to see, what does the cargo capacity end up being, and is the maneuverability going to leave it in some tough situations. Overall, I have faith in what the ship is going to be, and I think it's the best option for people who don't have other ships that specialize in the roles that they want the Caterpillar to do. Otherwise, I think you're going to end up taking the other ships out because they do better in those defined roles. But if you just have fighters or something small like that, and you want something that opens up more gameplay options for you, then looking at the Caterpillar is definitely worth your time. So I hope that helps answer your questions that you may have had since the ship is up for sale again. If you have other questions or opinions, please get them in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for a whole lot more content tuned, and I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.